Cebu City Mayor Tommy Osmeña says he will file a disbarment case against Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre over alleged interference in the tax cases that his government filed against BDO Unibank. Osmeña says he may file graft complaints against Aguirre. He says, quote, This country is better off if he is disbarred because he's very forgiving to the rich. You're a drug lord or you're very rich. You're forgiven. If you're influential, okay, you're forgiven. This stems from the tax complaint against BDO that Osmeña said was dismissed by the Justice Department. In 2017, Osmeña publicly slammed BDO for not paying the correct tax to the Cebu City government, saying a branch pays only 6 pesos a day. The Cebu City government went on to file tax complaints against BDO. Osmeña says the complaints were dismissed outright by the DOJ prosecutors. He says, quote, How do I know DOJ was paid? Because I was offered money to drop the charges too. Osmania says Aguirre interfered when the Justice Secretary ordered the Cebu prosecutor to inhibit after he found probable cause. Aguirre doesn't directly confirm if he indeed ordered the Cebu prosecutor to inhibit. He says, quote, In danger of national security or to prevent miscarriage of justice, those two are grounds that I can cite in using my power to transfer or power to get the cases. Aguirre adds, quote, In this case, you know that in Cebu, there is really intense conflict between the office of the mayor and SM. One group is saying some prosecutors are under the influence of some officials. Aguirre threatens a countersuit against Osmeña but does not say what complaint it will be. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre says he sees a defect in the plunder charges against alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Lim Napoles. Aguirre says this even as he insists his move to turn Napoles into a witness for new cases will not affect already existing cases at the Sandigan Bayan. He says, quote, It seems that we have discovered defects in the charges in the Sandigan Bayan against her. The charges here are plunder, and plunder is a charge against a government official. Aguirre also says Napoles is qualified to be a government witness because as a private person, she is not the most guilty. The Office of the Ombudsman prosecuted five counts of plunder and a dozen counts of graft against Napoles that are now being tried at the Sandigan Bayan. Aguirre says the theory of Napoles not being the most guilty would show defects in the already existing cases. Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales had said she will block any attempt to make Napoles a state witness in those cases. Health Department Secretary Francisco Duque III refutes the report of a group of Filipino scientists that there is a new HIV virus strain in the country. Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology Director Edsel Salvana of the University of the Philippines' National Institutes of Health warned the public last week against the alleged aggressive HIV AE subtype. Salvana said the new drug-resistant HIV subtype can worsen the epidemic in the country. But Duque says the DOH has not received any information from the World Health Organization on the supposed presence of the HIV strain in the country. That is fake news. Wag na po sana tayo na uh, uh, maging uh, uh, isimula ng mga ganong balita kasi hindi naman po ito uh, batay sa ebidensya. At uh, I'm sure if uh, there was a uh, strain, a new strain, we would have been uh, informed by the WHO and other uh, authorities in uh, so HIV AIDS. The Philippines has the fastest growing HIV epidemic in the Asia Pacific. President Rodrigo Duterte on Wednesday says he himself inserted some provisions into the draft agreement with Kuwait on safeguarding OFWs. Duterte wants the Kuwaiti government to ensure that overseas Filipino workers get seven hours of sleep, are well fed, enjoy holidays, and won't have their passports confiscated by their employers. He earlier banned the deployment of OFWs to Kuwait, pending an agreement between the Philippines and Kuwait that will ensure protection for Filipinos working there. Duterte is considering imposing a similar ban covering other Middle Eastern countries. He says Filipino migrants must not be abused. Cambridge Analytica, the British firm that supposedly misused data from 50 million Facebook users, suspends its chief executive. The move to suspend CEO Alexander Nix comes as recordings emerged in which he boasted Cambridge Analytica played an expansive role in United States President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. In undercover filming captured by Britain's Channel 4 News, Nix is also seen boasting about entrapping politicians and secretly operating in elections around the world through shadowy front companies. Earlier, it was revealed that Cambridge Analytica improperly harvested information from 50 million Facebook users. Cambridge Analytica denied using Facebook data for the Trump campaign, but the scandal has ratcheted up the pressure on the social media giant. Facebook on Tuesday says its top executives are working around the clock to get all the facts. Facebook says, quote, The entire company is outraged we were deceived. 
We are committed to vigorously enforcing our policies to protect people's information and will take whatever steps are required to see that this happens. Cambridge Analytica's board says Nix will stand aside immediately pending an investigation into the snowballing allegations against him. In Channel 4's recordings, Nix makes disparaging comments against U.S. lawmakers on the House Intelligence Committee to whom he gave evidence last year. He says Democrats are motivated by sour grapes and Republicans ask few questions. Nix was caught on camera telling an undercover reporter, quote, They're politicians. They're not technical. They don't understand how it works. He also outlines the use of a secret self-destructing email system, which deletes emails two hours after they have been read. Shareholders also file a class action suit against Facebook Tuesday, saying they suffered losses over the Cambridge Analytica controversy. Facebook shares went down 6.8% Monday amid concerns about pressure for new regulations that could hurt its business model.